tell you a very interesting story. This is a story of a war between two countries, France and Germany. You know, some country must win, some country must lose. And of course, this time the France was actually losing the war. The army general was sitting and thinking what next to do, what next to do, how to tell the king what is happening, what is not happening. He went and sat in front of a wall and he saw a spider making nests. Now you are thinking I will be telling you the Robert Bruce and spider story. No, that's not the thing. The thing is that he saw this net being made up of two, three lines. And he saw this is very interesting. All the insects are coming and falling into this trap because there were two lines joining on each other. He next day made a nest net of his own soldiers. And in this way, this way was quite new. This way becoming so new, the people did not realize the efficiency of it. He soon won the war which was literally lost to him. Why? This very effective method was first formulated by joining two lines. Like this, like this and like this. And the whole net is a meeting of two lines. This very interesting phenomena made the army general think over again on his own career. Though he was quite old as an army general, he left army and started thinking on the maths of it. And he developed the system of named after him. His name is René Descartes de Cartesian. And under his name comes the Cartesian coordinate system which we are going to reveal to you so that you also can do something on it. Right? First things first. What is the relation between you and me? The relation between you and me is that you are a viewer and I am a kind of a professor. Right? So, dear Max lovers, see this. This is a kind of a relation that can be plotted or that can be said something like student to teacher. This is a relation. When does this become? When does this become? This has to be plotted on a graph. How can we plot this? Right? There are say 10 students. And there is one teacher. And there are say 20 students. And there is say two, two teachers. Okay. But these are random points on the graph. First, in the, uh, I mean the two dimensional system that he had developed. He said, one is independent. That is whether you view, view me or no, that is independent. But I am dependent on the views. That is, I am dependent. So one variable he called as y, that is dependent. And x, that is independent. Right. First, you may have a better understanding of this. Suppose, you put some hours of study every day. There are 24 hours in total. So about you give sometimes 6 hours of study, sometimes 3 hours of study, sometimes 24 hours of study. I don't know such studious people are there or not, but there might be some. So what happens is that, you know, due to this, your marks gets raised. But can you tell me how much? No, you can't. You know that this is a, there is a dependence on this to that. Right? That means there is a dependence of this variable, I mean y, on x. That is why we write y as a function of x. Okay? But we exactly do not know how it is dependent on x. When we know how it is dependent on x, then we say the locus of this x is as plotted on the graph of y. To make this match pretty simpler, first we have to take up some 
examples. Alright. Suppose I write say 1 as x, 2 as x, 3 x x, 4 as x and y here and that is minus 1, minus 2, minus 3, minus 4. As long as you can draw a graph that is that is something like this and go four. Well, I have done a mistake. Many of you might not have and known what is a graph and I started teaching you or something on the graph. Well, see, in graph, this horizontal axis is called the x-axis, which represents the independent values. First, it represented the hours you de devoted to study. That is the independent value. Say time, independent value. But the marks that you get, that is in the y axis. This very effective method was first formulated by joining two lines. Like this, like this and like this. And the whole net is a meeting of two lines. This very interesting phenomena made the army general think over again on his own career. Though he was quite old as an army general, he left army and started thinking on the maths of it. And he developed the system of named after him. His name is Rene Descartes de Cartesian. And under his name comes the Cartesian coordinate system which we are going to reveal to you so that you also can do something on it. Right? First things first. What is the relation between you and me? The relation between you and me is that you are a viewer and I am a kind of a professor, right? So, dear maths lovers, see this. This is a kind of a relation that can be plotted or that can be said. Something like student to teacher. This is a relation. When does this become? When does this become? This has to be plotted on a graph how can we plot this right there are say 10 students and there is one teacher and there are say 20 students and there is say two two teachers okay but these are random points on the graph first in the uh, I mean the two dimensional system that he had developed he said one is independent that is whether you view, view me or no that is independent but I am dependent on the views that is I am dependent so one variable he called as y that is dependent and x that is independent Right. First, you may have a better understanding of this. Suppose you put some hours of study every day. There are 24 hours in total. So about you give sometimes 6 hours of study, sometimes 3 hours of study, sometimes 24 hours of study. I don't know such studious people are there or not, but there might be some. So what happens is that, you know, due to this, your marks gets raised. But can you tell me how much? No, you can't. You know that this is a, there is a dependence on this to that. Right? That means there is a dependence of this variable, I mean y, on x. 
that is why we write y as a function of x okay but we exactly do not know how it is dependent on x when we know how it is dependent on x then we say the locus of this x is as plotted on the graph of y to make this math pretty simpler first we have to take up some examples all right suppose i write say 1 as x 2 as x 3 xx 4 as x and y here and that is minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 as long as you can draw a graph that is that is something like this and go done a mistake many of you might not have a known what is a graph and i started teaching you or something on the graph well see in graph this horizontal axis is called the x axis which represents the independent values first it represented the hours you de devoted to study that is the independent value say time independent value but the marks that you get that is in the y axis right so this is the dependent value now i get, i have a a quotation that every math teacher might have told you this is called add sugar to coffee is it here hmm right this is the positive x axis this is the positive y axis now think of any curve that you can find out find out and do suppose this is a curve okay and the next curve is suppose this one is a curve okay then you put something like this is also a curve something like this is also a curve right and something like this is also a curve this is also a curve now there must be a distinction between relations and functions what is the real definition and the distinction between relation and function many of us are why i am stressing on relations and functions in the middle of the graphs you will see that the best way to know whether a thing is relation or a function is just by drawing the graph of it suppose you draw a graph like this at every point of y if you put a horizontal i mean vertical line you will get a unique value of x right not two values suppose if i had this that means it has two values one here one here but in case i had just this part this means there is only one value understood in case there is only one value it it is called a function of x in case it has two values it is called a relation of x understood so what happens is that all relations are functions but all functions are not relations understood so this is the basic difference between a relation and a function that is to say x square plus y square is equal to r square a standard form of circle a circle is not a function a circle is not a function but a straight line y is equal to mx plus c is a function 
Understood? This is the x axis, this is the y axis. This is called the first quadrant. This is called the second quadrant. This is called the third quadrant. This is called the fourth quadrant. Now, how to plot a point on this graph? In order to plot a point, a value would be given, say 2, 5. It will, you have to start with the value of 2 on the x axis, this is here, and then 5 here. This is 5 here. So this is the point 2. 5. In case you have to plot the point 5, 2. So, you have to kind of put 5 here, 2 here. So, this is called 5, this is called 2. Okay? Now, This is a 2D coordinate system. Now let us go to some examples. Right? Now, in case I had plotted the two points 2, 5 and 5, 2. Now, in order to find a third point, say that is called 3, 1. This is somewhere here. Now we connect them. It forms a triangle. Understood? Now, if I need to find the area of this triangle, all you need to remember is 1, 2, 3. Now, how do you and means connect this with this? You can't connect. Right? So, I am helping you out. You put x1 is equal to 3, y1 is equal to 1. Similarly, with the others, x2 is equal to 5, x y2 is equal to 2 x3 is equal to 2 y3 is equal to 5 Once you have done up writing this How will you do this? Put half here Put a moth sign here y1 This is the 1 here x2 2 here, x, 3 here. Understood? This is 1, 2, 3. Okay? This I have just put from 1, 2 and 3. Now 1, 2, 3, 1. It goes by a cyclic order. The 1 that was here will be replaced by 2 here. The 2 that was here will be replaced by 3 here. The 3 that was there will be replaced by 1. And similarly that it follows. The 2 here will be replaced by 3. 3 replaced by 2. And 2 replace and 1 replaced by 2. 3 replaced by 1 I meant. So this is how you will find the area of a triangle. The proof is a 10 minutes lecture which I will include in the second lecture. Okay. But now, there are two very critical conditions that I want to add up here. Suppose, suppose one point was 0, 0, 
one point was one one and one point was two two. Now you can exactly see they are lying on a straight line. In such a case, if you put the values in that formula, you will get the result I see. This is one of the laws that you can keep in mind that once these lines fall in a straight line or the points are collinear, then the area of the triangle will come to zero. This is the first part. Second part is suppose instead of a triangle, you are told to find the area of a quadrilateral. Something like this. May it not be a rectangle or a rhombus or any figure, just a quad quadrilateral. How to do that? Just cut it into two halves, each representing a triangle. Understood? Then you apply the formula there. This is the basics of how to approach the problem. Okay? So, here I am ending the first video on coordinate geometry. The next one would be on straight lines.